This is 6.6 .6 part 3. We're going to finish off the problem here with the maximum profit. So we have to find out how many tickets we have to sell um, in order to reach a maximum profit. And so that represented our n or our x value in this case, um, which is the x value in the, um, in the vertex here. So we have to sell um, 290 tickets to reach this maximum over here. And the next part of the question is, well, what is the maximum profit? And that's simply the um, other part of our vertex, the y value of our vertex, which is this over here. So the max profit is $36,100. And this occurs at 290 tickets. If you go beyond that, the fees you have to pay will cost you more than the money you made from the tickets. Um, and if you keep going beyond that, eventually there'll be a point where, again, you're not making, um, or rather, no, it won't cost you more than what you're paying for tickets. You just won't be making the maximum. It'll start to decrease and decrease and decrease until you get to a point where um, now the fee you're paying is the same cost as the um, amount you paid for the tickets. And then eventually, if you go beyond that, then the fee will cost you more. So again, just re to recap what I said, this is sort of our, our model here. We have, um, before we sell any tickets, we had paid um, uh, $48,000. So we were in the negatives. We start selling, we start to rise, but we're still losing money. Um, we start to make more, but we do we start to earn more money, but we're not getting a profit yet. So profit means you're actually making money and you're not in the negatives. Eventually, we get to a point at our first zero where we are a break-even point, which means that um, the the amount we're earning is equal to the amount we've spent, um, but we haven't made a profit yet. Once you go beyond that zero line, now we start to make a profit, and we keep making a profit, keep making a profit. We're making more and more, and, and it's, it's more than we spent up until we get to a maximum of 290 over here, um, or a ticket sale of 290 to make $36,100 there. Um, so... So this would be our maximum profit over here at 290 um, tickets being sold. So um, next we have to look at what happens after 290. Well, after 290 now, um, we're still earning money. It's just that we're not making as much because um, we have to pay that fee uh, for each member that comes in. Um, so we get to a point where eventually there's so many tickets being sold, yet there's too many people and we're paying a high fee. And so we're not really making a profit anymore. We're kind of at a break-even point again. And if we go beyond that break-even point, then um, we start going back into our losses, which is why we represent that as a parabolic uh, function. So now we'll do our last question. Um, so here we have Shannon who's practicing her 10-meter platform dive. Uh, because of gravity, the relation between her height in meters and the time in seconds after she dives is quadratic, which means we have a parabola happening. If Shannon reached a maximum height of 11.225 meters after 0 0.5 seconds, how long was she above um, the water after she dove? So this is interesting. We have a lot of information given to us, but kind of in disguise. Um, we can take a look at what's given to us in the question here. So we have um, a maximum height maximum height and so we know this maximum height means a vertex and because it's a maximum height even though it's not really essential now we know that a parabola is going to be opening from the bottom because the vertex is a maximum the highest point so that means that our a is going to be a negative value. Minus the e just means negative. Um, we're also told that she's practicing her 10 meter platform dive. So if we were to graph out or sketch what that looks like, it would be something like this. She's not starting off on the ground or at the water level. She's starting off 10 meters above the water. She's jumping, reaching a maximum, and then landing in the water. She rises, 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 reaches a maximum there, and then goes into the water, which would be a zero over here. 
So this here would be our vertex. Our, um, if we label this graph properly, we'd have our height over here, our time over here. So this would be our uh, 0 0.5, 11.225. So in other words, this distance here would be the 11.225 meters, and this time here would be 0 0.5 seconds. So it takes you 0 0.5 seconds to reach our maximum height, and afterwards you go back down. So what this part here told us, this 10-meter um, platform dive, told us that at 0 seconds, she's already 10 meters above the water. In other words, this is our y-intercept. Now we're asking how long was she above the water after she dove? How long was she above the water after she dove? So what is that asking us? Let's look at our graph. We're basically saying after she dove, how long did it take her to get back down to zero over here? So we're trying to find the time that it took her to get back down to zero. Because here she's above the water, 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 above. Then finally here she's back in the water. So we're going to find that time for where she was above the water. And in other words, we're looking for our zeros. So if we're looking for our zeros, Um, we need some kind of equation to do that. We don't have an equation right now, so right now we need to make an equation. So we have a vertex, and we have a point. So we can start making our equation h is equal to a times um, t, which is our x, minus um, our vertex x value there, 0 0.5 squared plus 11.225. This is our k value from the vertex. And we can find this a value here. We can find a using the y-intercept, which was 0, 10. So we could do 10 is equal to a times 0 minus 0 0.5 squared plus 11.25, um, so that means 10 is equal to, um, so we're just going to do 0 0.5 squared, 0 0.5 squared, and of course it's 0 0.25, so that's going to give us 0 0.25a. 0.25a plus 11.225. We're going to solve for a by doing 10 minus 11.225 is equal to 0.25a. And then we're going to get, so let's get our answer here. So we'll have our 10 minus, minus 11.225. We get negative 1.225 is equal to 0.25a divided by 0.25 and we get that a is equal to so divided by 0 0.25 negative 4.9 is equal to a. Um, and so what we have here is um, our final aspect to find our equation. So we can now say that therefore the height can be modeled by negative 4.9 times 0. Point, uh, times, let me erase that. Times t minus 0 0.5 squared plus 11.225.
And so now we have our equation. Now that we have this equation, what we want to do is solve for uh, t when h is equal to 0. So we want to step 2 here, or step 3 I should say. So 1 was sketch, 2 was find the equation, 3 is solve for t when h is equal to 0, because we want to say, see how much time it took to get down to 0, which means how much time we're above the water for. There's a few ways you can do it. You could expand this and then factor it. That would probably be tough to do. You could expand it and then use your quadratic formula. So you could do that. That could work. Um, or we can just solve by using our vertex form here, um, as, I shown in the previous, as I've shown in the previous video. So we're going to set this to be equal to 0. So negative 4.9 times t minus 0 0.5 squared plus 11.225 is equal to 0. Uh, and we're going to isolate for t. So minus 4.9 times t minus 0 0.5 squared. Send this to the other side. Gives us negative 11.225. Uh, we can divide both sides by negative 4.9. Cross that out, cross that out. Negative 4.9. And so we get t minus 0 0.5 squared is equal to, so let's do our 11.225 divided by 4.9. And we get... Um, 2.29, so it's about 2.29, because I'm rounding here, so I'm putting a little dot there to show it's an approximation. So 2.29. And now what I can do is I can do the square root of both sides to get t minus 0 0.5 is equal to plus or minus, remember when you do the square root of the constant, it can be a plus or minus version, uh, so square root of that plus or minus 1.51. And now I can go two directions. I can do my plus my plus direction um, or my minus direction. Actually, let me just uh, isolate for t first before I do that. So um, before I even do that, let's do t is equal to plus or minus 1.51. Send 0.5 to the other side, plus 0.5. So now I can go the two different directions. I can go t is equal to plus 1.51 plus 0 0.5. Or I can go t is equal to minus 1.51 plus 0 0.5. And so if I go the plus route, I get about 2.01 seconds. If I get the mi minus route, I get negative 1.01 seconds. So here you need to choose which one makes the most sense. In our parabola, we're not going to have negative times. So chances are it's not this one. It's probably going to be this one over here. Therefore, uh, Shannon is above the water for approximately 2.01 seconds. Basically, from the time that she goes from her, her initial jump to landing in the water, that takes 2.01 seconds. So that's how long she's above the water for. Um, and so that was the final problem in section 6.6. .6. You should go try other problems in the textbook from section 6.6 .6, um, to make sure you grasp the concept. Again, the more variety of problems that you do, the better off you're going to be um, when it comes to solving these problems. Practice using your different skills, vertex, solving um, in different ways, and you'll improve. Be sure to practice other word problems posted online.